Hello, darlings. Thank you for tuning in to Living Out Loud with Loretta, the podcast. I'm your host, Loretta Nkwacha. Now, like many of you, I'm a parent. I have friends, a life partner. I work in my home. I work outside my home. I have a social life. Well, I try to. It's hard to balance all of this and fit in some me time without feeling guilty. It's hard, but not impossible. Each week, listen to parents from all walks of life as they share their stories of the pursuit of equilibrium, that beautiful thing we call balance, so that they can still live their life out loud. Hello! Hi! We're we're, we're cut off! Hold on! No! Perfect! Hold on! Let me... Perfect! No! Good. I'm like, are you sure it feels a little low? She's like, no, I think it looks great. She's like that. Oh my God. Yeah, that's fine. We're trying to get <laughs> Hi. Hi, darling. How are you? How are you? I am so well. You know what? Like, I feel in our conversations, obviously online, I feel like I just want to go, bring. Hi. Hi, guys. How are you? How's it going? What's it? Like, I'm like texting back and forth with you guys. I feel like I'm like, in your house, do you know? I know, I, mean? I know. Which is a bit cool, <laughs> you know? <laughs> no, I feel the same way. I actually feel the same way. Oh. Yeah, because you guys talk talk a lot. You yeah, two we're... talk more than... <laughs> like, yeah, she's like, so, so what are you guys talking about? I'm like, me, you know, mostly me. That's, that's what Dang. I try to keep her focused on. Because I'm freaking out about these bloody films, these bloody movies oh, that I'm watching, I'm you. like, Oh my gosh. And I love how, now this is a wonderful thing. And I think I said this to you yesterday, Mark. Like I love how the two of you work together all the time. It's like, it's the most perfect person to work with. Because I know people that work with their spouses and they're just like, oh yeah, no, it's too much. You live at home. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, you don't feel that way, do you? Me? No, oh no, 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 no. I was just looking no. at him and smiling. No, we love working together. Yeah. You know, but but there is days where you know if that if there's like a night shoot, I'll be like looking at him like I want to go to bed, and he looks at me and he's like, like what do you want me to do, Bri? And you're like hired as the actress. I yeah. can't I can't shoot you out early, but I'll look at him like as his wife, being yeah. like take care of yeah. your wife. Exactly. <laughs> but it's like no, you're just an actress. You're not my wife. <laughs> yeah. So I would say there was a there was one shoot early on where she didn't quite get that I was on set as a director and not as her husband because right. there's way too many things going on for me to 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 try to take care of her as a husband you know what I mean and there was and so but she knew that and at the same time she was like I'm gonna ask anyway so there any way you can get me out of here sooner so we can just turn around on me and like hey we have to shoot all this stuff in this direction then we can turn around on you and she's like but why did you start you know it's just like and, but yeah but at, but besides that, you know, because I, I and of course I wanted to take care of her. I wanted to say so. I came back to everybody's like, is there any way we can? And they all looked at me like, like You're he was a crazy. He was <laughs> no crazy. Way. But here's the thing: I, we had to set. It took us a while, but you know, when I'm having a bad day on set or struggling and need someone to talk to other than my sponsor, but the person I call is him. So if I'm on set getting frustrated, I'll call him and say, oh, my God, I'm getting frustrated. Oh, I hate waiting because I'm very impatient. You know, like, I'm like, let's go, let's go. And he's like, you can't do that to me on my set. Like, I can't be that person yeah. for you. And I was like, but who else am I supposed to tell it to? So it was like a little. It's definitely a learning, like a, yeah. a learning curve for us to figure that out because on set, the on yeah, set, on set, yeah, stuff, the on set yeah. stuff, yeah. But yeah. the writing together and and doing the podcast together and him helping with the book and 
you know, he was my backup person other than my editor. He would come in and say, hey, I think you need to put more details. Hey, this about the the program needs to be put in because he's also in 12-step recovery. So we work well that way, just that little hiccup on set. Yeah, because we, we have this nice, we compliment each other because we're so different. freaking different. <laughs> we are like literally, literally night and day like we from said everything this, Brianne, when you and i chatted on my podcast i said to you like me and my husband we are total opposites not just the way we look but our star signs he's aries i'm libra yeah yeah, so yeah we you, are taurus yeah Tor okay how do you overcome that then so how do you manage to meet in the middle I think it helps us. I think if we were too similar, we would come at everything the same yeah. and we don't have, we have such different points of view. Right. And I think just working on ourselves internally gave us a better line of communication because there would be so much miscommunication. So now, especially when we're working together, we over communicate, we over communicate all the time. It's all, actually sometimes people probably think it's too much communication, but it works yeah, for true. us. And I think, when you put opposites together, I come from it very like structured, you know, but wanting to move, looking at the money, looking at that stuff. And he comes from a very creative, passionate, let's go over it 20 million times. And I'm like, no, let's ship it. Like we've gone over it. So I'll stop him from like take per craft, like taking forever with a project. I'm like, let's just do it. Let's she used the it. P word as if like, that's what it was. That's what she thinks it is. She calls it procrastinating because I haven't sent it out. And I'm like, well, just- Well, perfectionism. I'm the perfectionist. perfectionism. Say, but it's the other P word. It's the perfectionism that wants yes. it so perfect that, so I, will, perfect, that I will not send perfect. it out because I want it to be perfect. Because I want it to be, you know? And so that's why we, you know, she wants to check it off a box and like move on to the next thing. I'm like, wait, 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 okay. You know, but it helps me because we can move, we can get more things done that way. Yeah. And at the same time, I can help her say, let, wait, let's just pause. Pause. Is everything in there that you wanted to say? Is this everything that we needed yeah. to, you know? Did we double check it? Yeah. Did we triple check it? He's good at that, like slowing down my like freight train. Yeah. Cause she says she's impatient a little bit. <laughs> Proper yin, proper yin and yang. I yeah. don't know if that's the yin and yang sign. I'm trying to do it, but like, right, proper, yeah, yeah, yeah. there you go, right? Yeah. I love that. Okay, so I need some meaty stories. I'm not going to get into the book yet because, oh my gosh, you do not understand how much I was palpitating, laughing. I think in my review I wrote, I wanted to hug, strangle, berate, kiss, cry, all of these things, it was like, I mean, I know that it is partially your story, Brianne. But firstly, how did you guys meet? Acting class. <gasps> oh. <laughs> yeah. Acting class, yeah. yeah. Uh, the first time I, I saw him, you're gonna, you're gonna love this story. He, look at him, he's getting embarrassed. So our acting class that we started at and that we went to together, well, that's where we met is very like open and sexual and it pushes it's the boundary. I wouldn't say it's not sexual, but they're not afraid of it. They're like, let's push, push, push the, the boundary. You know, like do, you know, if, if that's, if, if that's what the scene asks for, then you should do it. This you're, it's just like you're on set. This is not like, Hey, we're just doing this because it's a, a scene in class. It was like full on. We're doing a, a theater piece. Mm -hmm. That would be something that would be on, you know, Broadway, you know, like yeah. very, going very method, very, like, yeah, to a certain degree. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, all right. Yeah. So I, it was my first class. Everybody's going to love this story. Look at He's like cringy. It was my first class and he was doing a scene on stage and I didn't see him before class because you're like backstage. And he was on stage in bed with his female scene partner having sex. And when he got out of bed, he was completely naked with a condom on. Taking the condom Wait, you off. You didn't see that though. No, no, you saw you take it off. From behind. I didn't show my open front. To no, I did not. I promise. I saw his open front piece. You wanted to. No, I saw him. <laughs> and, I, and I was new to this you class. Want, I would not have turned to the front. I would not. I'm just have, saying, you saw him naked, you guys. Whoever's You might have saw my butt. But that well, was, you. I saw it off. He doesn't you, were, you were pleased. You were pleased with what you saw, obviously. Well, no, but first I was thinking, no, it's not even that. Like, I wasn't like, ooh, who's that? Like, that wasn't my thought. My thought is, oh, my God, they were really having sex on stage. Is that the type of school I'm at? Like, I was so taken aback. Like, I was like, oh, 
I can't have sex on stage. They were really, because they were both naked and all that. So I was so taken aback. And then that's how the first, and then. And by the way, like that, that. <laughs> Look, see, so embarrassed. It's like. This that, was like 17 years ago. That was people. definitely <laughs> my scene partner's idea. And. <laughs> And not my idea, a hundred percent. This was literally no. It's a it's a consensual thing. It's a consensual it's not, thing, yeah. but she was definitely like, you know, I think I really need to push this. I need to like really go for this thing. And okay, she might have had a crush on me. I'm not sure, but like, yeah, hello, that's what you know. Saying. But like, well, uh, mom, but mom so and I was right, single, right? so I was like, okay, oh, that sounds like a great idea. Great. But no, I mean, you saw, you read the books. Sex scenes are like the least sexiest situation. So my scenes in Jarhead, anytime I had a sex scene, even the ones he's directed in Murder in Mexico, there's a sex scene. It is so technical and unsexy. So even if he's on stage, it's very technical. You like you put your hand here, you can't touch here, you can do everybody's like wearing a sock or a cover. Like it is just not sexy. So FYI. Literally, but, my husband came in the room just as your sex scene was happening. And yeah. in the kitchen, it's broad daylight. He stopped, he's looking. I said, baby, listen, I know you weren't reading the book with me, but Brianne explains these scenes are literally like there are 10 million people in the room. You know, it doesn't matter how like attractive to each other they might be. There no. are a lot of people watching and you're not doing anything. You just make it look real. He was like, uh-huh, awesome. Uh-huh, <laughs> Does, totally doesn't Because, be, but uh, you're an actress, but is he an actor? No, no. he's a yeah. no, that's why he doesn't So a lot know. of times that happens where they don't quite understand. They're like, no way, they're totally, in, yeah. Yeah, and when you kiss, you don't use tongue. Like, that's a rule. It's well, like an doesn't. unspoken rule. No, oh, you okay, don't. so we <laughs> this whole thing this in is the what beginning. I think. I think if it's theater, you don't have to use your tongue. I think when it's TV or film, because the camera's right there. Oh, don't show my nails. When it's right there, we, I, 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 I want to. You're a tonguer? Well, you're a tonguer too? I am not a tonguer. I, but you I can make it. Brianne's like, she wants to do like the 50s. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not a tonguer. And I've only had it happen one time. And. It was a little startling. So you. So I don't know. You two are like the minority. I want authenticity. I want like I want to, I want to like you. I want you to feel what I'm feeling. Oh, but you and you have to agree at the beginning though, right? Before oh. we even shoot the scene, like yeah, because obviously that person did not with you. No, oh. they did not agree. I, I, it's so unspoken though. They, no, for her. Most people, that's not, you're kissing. I'm kissing no, you on I'm, camera. No, I mostly kiss guys on camera. I've had a couple female kisses. I'm just saying, most people, when they're kissing on camera, use their tongue. No, not in my situation. And you've yes, seen how yes. many movies I've been in and kiss people. Yes. Like, that does not happen. I'm watching, ah. I'm watching movie. Oh, <laughs> okay. Okay, okay well, wow, wow. People, Woo. I'm sorry you had to see that. Do not apologize. You don't understand. I love the like the, the dynamic between the two of you. I love it because it's like it's like best friends who are attracted to each other and love being around each other. I like you explain. Oh my gosh, there's too much. I need ten hours with you. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay. So, so okay. So rewind. So obviously, yeah. so Mark, you when you guys met. So Mark, you didn't know about Brianne's um, past, but or did you meet him during like at the beginning of your sobriety, or was it at the end? well not at the end because you're always in like, sober no, meeting so, and everything, right? No, so when we met, mm -hmm. um, it was five years before, right? I think um, so. Yeah, five years before she yeah. got into the program. Four and, and a half. Four and a half. Four yeah. and a half years. And. Um, you know, and they, like anything else in relationships, you know, it's always, you know, you're always, you're, it's like you're not necessarily exactly who you are in the beginning. Like, you're not really yourself, you know, you sort of well, like, You don't see all like the nitty gritty and yeah, the you're flaws. putting yourself, you know, you, you put know, yourself out the best like, person. Like literally, yeah. Brian, well, like quickly found out I was not the guy that was like successful and had money and had this nice car and this nice house. She was like, oh, okay, so he's not that guy. Well. <laughs> But I never looked for guys like that. No, no, no. Yeah. But you had said you sort of assumed that maybe I was that. You were hoping that maybe I was that guy, at least. Well, you caught, you came off with that air. Yeah, yeah. You I know? know how to fake it. Fake really. it till you make it. Yeah. Fake it till you make yes. it. Because I cared so much about what people thought of me. So I had to, like, you know, put it out there. 
yeah. But you know, the, yeah, so he, we weren't together. He's been in his recovery for a very long time since he was 19 years old. And I remember we were, we lived together, you know, after a couple months and I remember he would go to his AA meetings and I'd be like, I want a group. I want a group I belong to. Like I was so like, not jealous, but just like, well, how awesome you get to go and like talk about your problems with these people. Okay. Pause. Uh-oh. 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 So, so first of all, that's not how it was in that. It was like, why do you have to go to these stupid meetings? Like, why do you have to go like four times a week? You're like 20 years sober. Why, why, why are you, are you talking still, about God? Why are you, yeah, I, you know, I don't like Ooh. this whole God thing. I'm not into Yeah, it. I wasn't into God. I, I, you know, the religion I grew up with in the South was yeah. very strict and judgmental. And like, God doesn't love you if you do these bad things. But you can do these bad things. But if you don't go to church on Sunday and ask for forgiveness, then you're going to hell. Like, that's yeah. what I grew up with. That's what people said to me in my school and stuff. Like, I said, don't do the bad things, and then you, wh wait, you can do anything you want and then ask forgiveness, and I'm going to hell, you're not going to hell. So that yeah. was my yeah. religious God situation. Yeah, so in the beginning of our relationship, there wasn't, we didn't have this spiritual, spiritual thing, and there was like, I was doing my thing, you know, and so I think that that, well, now that's like our foundation. I mean, yeah. that's the thing that's like kept us together is having that. that yeah, mutual. for all, for 16 and a half years. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but in the beginning, that was not it. And I just want to also say that like, when we first met, I was going through a, a period of like, I need, I was not committed. It was like a, like we met on January, we, or we dated on January 14th was our first, first, date. first date. But on the New Year's Eve before that, you know, just, 14 days before I was at a friend's house watching Napoleon dynamite with like three guys and his one of the guy's wife. And I was like, this is my life. Like it's new year's Eve. And I'm like, I should be out with people. I should like have a partner. I should, you know? And so I'd done a monologue, you know, like two weeks later that she didn't see cause she was out of town working. And, and it was basically saying, I want to, I'm willing to commit to somebody. Like, I want to meet the person. I want to like, I want to stick around. I don't want to just leave. So when we met, we finally, when she asked me out. I asked him out. I love yeah. it. I love it. Yes. Twice. Woo! <laughs> what? You turned her down? No, no, no. She asked me out for the first one. I said, yes. And then we went on the second, we went on that date. And then the next day we saw each other in class. And I said, I had a really cool time. That was, that was, that cool. was a really, no, that's not how he said it, lady. He said it like this. Yeah, that was a really good time last night. Like, that's it. That's all he said. He didn't say, hey, you want to do it again? There was like yeah. 10 people around. There was like so, other students. Hey, I really, and then he called me right after class and he said, I'm sorry. I was trying to be cool. People were around us. I didn't know what to say. And I then was like, yeah, I was about to say F you. I said, are we going out again? Like, I was... No, she goes, yeah, yeah, that was a good fucking time. Like, you're not going to ask me. So you didn't ask me out again? Like, I was like, what do you mean cool? Like, that was a great time. Are you gonna, are we going out again? I was like, oh, yeah, sure. I said, tonight? She's like, yeah, great. And then literally a month later, we she moved in. And oh, I had I, never lived with anybody. I had never like had a, a serious relationship more than like a year. Doesn't that go to show there are there shouldn't be or we shouldn't think there should be rules to yeah. how you engage with someone. It's not like, oh, you need six months before this or whatever else. No, you go with what feels authentic to you. Don't worry about whatever bloody else, everyone else is doing. You do what feels right to you. If there's a connection and your souls and your spirits align, you bloody go with it. Simple yeah. as that. F everyone else. And, and I mean, I think, it, and I think at the same time, you know, there's, we, we, we worked hard. Hard. Like the relationship we worked like it, even in the beginning when it was before we were both in program there was still you know we were i was still using tools i had about communicating and you know trying to come from a spiritual place having and, hard conversations yeah. um and i think that that really made a difference yeah but it really exploded for us you know really when i went into my program yeah i mean it was like the darkest place for her it was like it's the like highest of my high and she was at her lowest of her low that was like where we were like opposite ends of our relationship like where we, I'm like couldn't where we could be, mm -hmm. and then to come like a year later, you know, after having done the work, and I was also in a place that sort of took me down money wise. Like I was like, 
have all this great success. I'm totally broke. I have no idea how to have a relationship with money. So yeah. we were both And you were gambling. Same. I was gambling, like all the money that I had just got from this cool project. I was just like, yeah, you know? Yeah. And so to yeah. come out of that and be able to say, oh, we're still together. Oh, yeah. you know, that we worked it through it, you know? Yeah, but we well, both had, we had to work really hard. It's not like, we could have bailed on each yeah, other. Yeah, was, like we yeah. could have bailed and yeah. We, I think because we had a, such a foundation of friendship and respect that we, you know, said, let's work on ourselves. He can't fix me. If I like we had very strict boundaries, he didn't wasn't allowed to come and help me if I was crying or having a moment. I had to call my sponsor. I went to therapy twice a week. I did pro, you know, it took me therapy eight years twice a week. You know, doing the program, having a sponsor, and him getting in his other program and doing that, we couldn't fix each other. Yes. We knew that. And we said if we, if the only way we can get healthy is to let go of each other, then we have to be willing to do that. We both had that commitment, and instead we grew, but grew together as two individuals. Now, who, now the thing is, right, I don't know how many people understand this and realize this, because I feel like, obviously, divorce, you guys, you're in Hollywood, you yeah. see fully well how many, you know, how easy it is for people to turn to divorce uh, as, yeah. a, as, a, you know, as a way out instead of doing the work. The work is hard. And oh, at yeah. the moment, you are going to doubt whether this is the person for you or not. And I guess it, the, the, the proof is in the pudding because if you've done the work and it brings you closer than you were even before you started, that's yeah. the evidence. And I don't know how many people are willing to do it or understand it. And I think these people like you who can prove we've had a long, you know, a long marriage, a long union going through our own shit and we are still here. Why are we still here? Because we put in the work. You don't bloody, you know, lose a million pounds if you're overweight just from thinking about it. You've got to put in the bloody work. Oh, I like Yeah, that. you're right. Uh -huh. right. No, but here's the thing that somebody said the other day when I was talking to them. He said, you could see the most attractive individual in the world, right? The most, uh, somebody is sick of effing them. Meaning that it doesn't matter what you look like sooner or later, the real has to happen. The real healthy relationship that waking up with bad breath, going to the bathroom, having stomach ache, getting sick, paying bills, all that stuff, no matter who you're with, how shiny it looks on the outside, you're going to get real with somebody. So... I just knew working my program is here's someone that I love and respect as much as I can love someone at the time who I would want to be friends with if we weren't together. The obvious problem is me because it's not the partners I'm looking for. It's who I want to, you know, spin through this life. Cause I never wanted to be married. I never wanted kids. It wasn't in, we weren't ever going to get married. We actually got married on our 10 years together. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so I just think, you know, you got to do the work and you think that shiny, pretty object or new person is going to fix you. It's not going to fix you ever. We also, you know, in a weird way, because we both came from divorce, you know, parents that got divorced when we, you know, when I was young, yeah. younger, and then you were when you're in teens. Yeah. It's like, so we said, we don't want to get married. Like, I don't want to like go through that, you know, and we didn't want to have, we didn't even, I mean, I was willing to have a child but i wasn't looking forward to having a child. i wasn't like i needed to have a child kind of thing and so we had these sort of things going into it we're like we're not going to get married and we're not going to have a kid yeah and then but something about sort of having that freedom but we also said I, I, it's not like i think it happened before we were married even but it was just like the divorce was not an option like that's just that's it, we we took that off the table like you weren't able to just go well, F it, I'm out. I'm out. Peace out. Pack you it up the I mean? bag, gone. Like, <laughs> that we we had sort of had that conversation in one of like our ugly moments of stuff. It's like you know, well, where are you gonna go? You gonna just like walk away like from this? It's like no, we gotta sit here and figure it out. Like I hate. Yes, I betrayed you. Yes, I'm sorry I did that. But like, what we have to, you know, it, it's cool if you don't if you don't want to forgive me. We want to move on. But like, how, we have to, you know, can we work it out rather than just go? let's you know find something else and i yeah. think once we took that off the table um you know even when you know our son at like a year old like meltdown and she's having a meltdown she's like i'm out I'm like, <laughs> I'm like i just want to leave right now like i want to bail this is not what i want i don't want to hear a screaming child this is not what i signed up for this, this is not, not what i signed up for i sort of just looked at it and i was just like but 
you're, she's where, like, where are you going to go? Like, I don't know. I mean, where who else is going to fucking put up with you? Yeah, I mean, he's like, like, I don't like, no way. He's what? like, take her. Take You'll her. just send no, her back. You'll no, send that's fine. I said, go ahead and go, babe. Go ahead back. I'll be here. We'll be here. You know, so I'm taking him with me. Okay, take and the dog. Go ahead and take him, you know. But I'll be here because I know we'll work it out. Oh, my God. So funny. <laughs> Okay, so tell me this. This is this is oh, it's bloody marvelous. Okay, so <laughs> when did you decide, Brianna? I'm going to write a book because I'm I'm in my program. I know what I'm doing now, and I'm helping other people. I'm a mentor to other people as well. What made you decide? Okay, I think I need to I need to write this down so that maybe other people, even though it's not fully my story. Although I think a lot of it probably is, and I can't <laughs> wait for one day for you to reveal which stories are you. Like for instance, like the beginning, the 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 the, the, the lowest point. Did that happen to you? <laughs> but not at the same time. No, not I'm not. It's names have been changed. The location yes. has been changed. The A time L frame M has been changed. Yeah. Yes. O yes. M G. OMG, yeah. OM bloody G. Okay, okay, okay. So when, when did you decide, I think I'm gonna write this down because I'm in my program, I'm helping me, I'm helping others, mm -hmm. a few others. Maybe I can help many other people because the podcast, did that come after you decided to write a book or before? After. Okay, so yes. talk to me about that process. And it's a terrifying process. I know you're terrified of it. So he, uh, yeah. He, it was his idea. It was right. never my idea. I never right. wanted to write a book. I was okay. never gonna break my anonymity. I was not interested. But he, I was shooting Lucifer and he kept coming up to me, you know, for a couple weeks and he'd be like, hey, there's this like writing course. Well, ah, get back up. Wait, hey, there's this writing course. <laughs> and I said, what are you talking about? I'm dyslexic. I have ADHD. I'm not interested in writing. I can't even do a complete sentence. I failed in English. What are you talking about? I'm an actress. I want the dialogue. I don't want to create the dialogue. Then I said, leave me alone. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and then he kept doing it. Like every, he did it six times. He's like, hey, so that writing course is starting soon. You know, they took a hundred dollars off. It's not that much money. You should do it. I'm like, no, go away. Like, stop. So by the sixth time, he came up to me and he looked at me and he said, listen, it's not that much money. You don't have to tell anybody. You can take a class or two and you can stop. Just try it, right? Just try it. No one has to know. You don't have to tell a soul. I'll, I'll be the only one that knows. And I said, okay, fine. I'll do it. Sign me up. So I took, started taking the class and I wrote the first draft in 45 days. And it was like a higher power, my God, came through me and wrote it because I never wanted to write it. It was a complete memoir. It was just my experience. And then when I was doing the rewrites and working at it and editing it and talking to him, um, you know, letting him read some of it, that all these other stories, past situations that happened to me, people that happened to people I know throughout my decade of recovery, dreams. I would wake up with dreams and then run into the office at three in the morning and write out scenes. So it just started becoming its own organic person. I'm like, okay, so who is this girl, right? She's me, but she's not me at the same time. She does other things, but, and I was sitting there in the Pandora, the song, from the police, Roxanne came on. Yes. And I was like, oh, that's who it is. That's Roxanne. And I was like, everybody has some Roxanne in them. Everybody's done that thing, that immoral thing, that bad thing, and think it defines them. Every, you know, your mom could be Roxanne, your dad, your sister, your brother, your cousin, whoever could be Roxanne. So I just allowed it to be this Roma class fiction based on my life. No one will ever know which story's mine. And it's like a fun game. And then you can try to guess who the people are because everybody's based on somebody, you know, superstar, cool girl, tattoo girl, glam girl. It's based, so it's like a fun game for people to try to figure it out. But yeah, I never planned on it. It's the, probably the best thing I've ever done. And then after that, the podcast came up. I woke up one morning and I was like, well, I wrote an article for HuffPost. So they're like, you need to start writing articles 
to help the book. So I wrote this article for HuffPost pretty much outing myself as a female sex and love addict because everything that comes out about sex addiction and stuff is men getting caught yes. doing cheating. Yes. Mary, and I'm like, there's such a bigger world. Like, 6% of the United States are sex and love addicts. There's tons in London. There's tons of meetings, but like 38% of them are women. But I'm telling you, it's a huge community all over the world. And I was like, that's not the truth of what this addiction is. We use people and sex and people, but it's bigger than that. It's about low self-esteem, fear of abandonment, fear of not being loved and all that stuff. So I wrote this article and the day it came out, girl, I was like, Oh my God, what I do? Did I ruin my career? I was having like a mini panic attack sitting here going, Oh my God, what I do? Why I do this? Ah! And two hours passed and nothing happened. <laughs> it was such a humbling experience. It was like, Oh my God, get over yourself, Brianne. You're like this big on the planet. So what happened is a month later, the pandemic happened, the world shut down and I woke up and I said, Oh my God, secret life podcast. I had such a relief of sharing my story on HuffPost. So many people reached out to me telling me, oh my God, that's my story. I've done those things. My husband has done those things, whatever. And I said, let's allow people to tell their past secrets. Are they still in releasing that last bit of shame and stigma? Because it was such a beautiful experience for me. And every episode I try to reveal something about myself. So it's tell me your secrets and I'll tell you mine. Um, because we're all in this together. We all have to do things we're not proud of, but it doesn't mean we're bad people. And I just wanted to give someone a safe place to express their pain, their suffering, their trauma, or funny ones where they're embarrassed. There's something about letting them go into the world and it's this healing, like universal healing that we're all doing together. And it gives other people permission. It's mm -hmm. like, yeah. okay, well, if they're gonna be vulnerable and, and, and you know, open up their, you know, closet or whatever, then yeah. I'm gonna do it as well. Well, you know, I'm not the only crazy one. I'm not the only one who did this when they were doing whatever. But yeah, I I remember one of my um, what me and my older sister were having an argument one day, and she, I had just then, I was thinking about moving to America, and her parting comment to me was, "Have fun fucking around the world." I said, "I will," and I did. <laughs> But I, <laughs> I own it. I'm like, yes, I had great fun doing that. You know, it's not for everyone, but I did. And it was fantastic. Now, have you had any, any, <laughs> have you had any negative repercussions? Like people come and say, what the fuck? What are you telling people about blah, blah, blah? Have you had anyone or, or negative where they've seen you in a different light? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh -oh. I mean, I've had some negative. I mean, I had a little conversation with my dad. Um, that didn't Ooh. go great. Uh, he, he, you know, flowed me all this love and then decided to retract it a little bit. And that was a little painful. Um, I've had people reach out and just say, you know, it's a pretty white girl that d doesn't, is just using her sexuality. And I'm like, everyone's entitled to their opinion, you know, but I was suffering. I was killing myself and it is addiction and people don't take it seriously. I mean, watch any dateline. It's all love triangles. People in jail are in usually in prison for sex and love addiction because they sold drugs, murdered for a partner, whatever, so on and so on. I've seen people commit suicide over this addiction. So it's very serious for me. And I've had a, a really close friend go to jail for this addiction too. So I just wanted to share my experience, strength and hope, and they can have their judgments and opinion. But majority, I'd say 96% of who reaches out to me is, is, I mean, I get a dozen a day sometimes and it is just like, that's why I did it to help people get in the rooms, to help people get out of bad relationships, going back to that unavailable people using porn as a, way to escape their reality, thinking that DMing that guy on Instagram is going to give their self-worth. Like, that's exhausting. And to have people reach out to me and say, oh, my God, I thought something was wrong with me. Because mm -hmm. that's what I thought. I thought I was broken. I thought I was alone, that I just didn't have that gene that knew how to commit or have healthy relationships. And truly, I just didn't get the tools in my background to know how to have a healthy relationship. They should teach it in school, how to have a healthy relationship, you know? Well, well, hold on. So Brianne, and I know other people are listening and watching, but have you considered, have you considered, have you considered, have you considered <laughs> putting a coaching course together? I have, I've gotten reaching, I, I, 
I'm supposed to probably do one in August. I still haven't been fully committed. Um, Please commit. Say yes. Face the fear. Face the fear and do it anyway. Seriously, because I was like, just the book and everything. And you know, obviously you and I spoke months ago. Yes. I was like, this is something people need somewhere for, or someone to, to, to show them, to teach them the tools that they'll need to be able to see themselves differently so that they don't yes. necessarily go down the road, which is going to then damage them for the rest of their lives or keep them yeah. in therapy for the rest of their lives. There's enough that we have to deal with as it is, especially young women, but young guys as well. It will oh, be amazing. Oh yeah, young guys as well. I mean, I have so many men reach out to me and I've gotten them in the program. I, I go on these Zoom meetings all over the world and I'll see people I talk to in Australia, in London, and they're in the meetings now, and they're getting help, and they're in therapy, and they're getting out of those relationships. And yes, I've had a, him, look at him smiling at me. He's like, you need to do the coaching thing. And I'm talking at recovery centers and things like that. So yeah, it's definitely. Um, I mean, she's, she's done already almost 85 podcast guest appearances in the last three or four months. I mean, it's just, there's, there's so much that she's able to share with people. Yep, so yes. I did also want to just roll like back one of the things she forgets the thing is that what made her sort of get into to get to the writing thing was you know a frustration with being an actress yes in LA that's true that's true where there's not a lot of roles for women that and the roles that are for women that she had gotten she was on this project and she loved the project and she loved the people but she was playing the wife that was like taking care of the husband and it was like Really? That's my role? That's my thing? And I think every dialogue I said, and I say it in the book, too, is like, how are you today? How was your day? What would you like to eat? Yeah, like, know. that was my dialogue so, every So out of that, time. she was like, I want to, you know, I'm tired of just being the actress. And, and so, you know, she's like, I had this idea, you know? And so she started working on this idea, and she got together with somebody else, and they, they had a similar story, and it was based on on sex and love addiction because she felt like there's all this people needed you know could get some information and get some you know because nobody's ad addressing it and so but in every show if you yeah. think about it somebody's obsessed with someone someone's yeah. a, you know murdering somebody else someone is like wanting to fall in love like if you watch every movie or show one of the characters is a sex and love addict but they never say it they never give it a name yeah, so that was sort of the thing. And, and after, you know, developing this project and pitching the project. Around and getting, town. Getting so close at times. And then it sort of was morphing into something else when somebody else came in and it was like, wait, this is not the project And the producer wanted. kept changing the, his mind and like wanting to bring other aspects in that really didn't go with the story. Yeah, so as, at one point it just was getting to a thing. It was like, hold on, wait, this is not the project we want. So Brienne like wrote down like basically in like 25 minutes, like here's the pitch. This is the show. This is the show that I want. Like, if this is not what we want to do, that's fine. But this is the one I was originally pitching, and now, you know, sort of expanding on this is it. So she sent that, and they said, yes, that's what we want. Let's focus on that. The person that we brought on probably is not the right person for that. So let's let's figure out what we're going to do. And so as that was happening, you know, I got this email about this writing course, and I was like, she doesn't want to write a script. She's not a, she said, I'm not a writer. So like writing, asking her to go write that script for this series doesn't seem to work. But I said, why not write a book? Like just write a book and you can, you can do prose. It doesn't have to be interior apartment day, you know, and figure out, wait, is that the right way? Is it nice? You know, you know, whatever you can just write. And so that's where that came out. I was like, I saw that she was like, bursting to tell these stories, to tell this, to tell what was in her heart. And because I watched her just like, you know, <laughs> this is the story, you know? And, and it wasn't the, the book. It was a completely different thing. It was literally six other characters and six other things. You know, it's a totally, just totally different project. But I knew that she had this desire to tell the story. Now, that's God, higher power. It wasn't me necessarily. Like, I don't want to take credit for that shit. You're like, I you really can't. Take credit. But it was definitely the, you know, and, and as much as she says, I said it six times, it's hard to say anything to her six times because the first time she's like, I don't. And then the second time it's like, I don't want to hear it. It's not what I want to do. It's not, I don't, it's not my thing. Third time was like, seriously, I don't <laughs> stop, you know? But I just felt like there was something pushing me to say, to do that. And I want to also say, cause when I, like the third time I told her, she told her sister about it. And so her sister ended up taking the course. 
then she took the course, but she couldn't tell her sister because she didn't want anybody to know. So she took the course with her sister. She told the course leader that the teacher that my sister did and I can't tell her, so don't call on me on these calls. <laughs> so every week she was on there. And at one point he said something like, Brianne, do you want to speak? And literally she's like, her sister said, I thought I heard you like oh. him call your name, which was weird, but like she never. So not until the end of the 90 days did she tell her sister that she was in the class with her. <laughs> Horrible. The, and the thing is, right, is are you like this with a lot of things? Is it just part of your character, right? What do you mean? If I'm like, like what? Yeah, just like, even, no, no, no. If I don't want to hear something, if I don't want to do something, don't oh. tell me. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to, maybe I will. Yeah. Okay, well, okay. All right, let me give it a try. Is that, is that kind of? Yes. Yes, okay. yeah, it takes me a little bit to, to warm up to the idea of it's not in my plan and in my vision and then that. It takes me a little, I'm a Taurus. I get, I'm stubborn. I'm the most stubborn sign. You have to like, I'm like a rock. You kind of have to. But you know what? Under. You're also one of the wisest signs. My mother was a Taurus, May 5th, so wise, very cantankerous for sure, but so, so wise. And just, you know, you trusted, but you trusted that when she did something, she truly was in it because she would have the same thing of like, no, 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 I'm firm in where I'm standing. Okay, no, all right, let me think about it. Oh, okay, let's do it. But you know yeah, that her decision, yeah. her decision is right. Okay, so two things. You, when you listen to the audiobook, it is a movie because you are doing interior. Da, 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 da. I'm like, hold on, it's a movie. Is that happening? Uh, <laughs> and secondly, who's going to direct? And uh, thirdly, which role am I going to play? <laughs> I'll um, answer in any order. Go ahead. Okay, perfect. You want to answer? No. Okay, so first of all, doing the audio audiobook was pure torture absolutely pure torture i think i ate a bag of chips almost every day like that was so <laughs> imagine reading all the worst thoughts things you've done situation like it was horrendous i wanted Josh, to call i could hear head. it i could hear yes. it in certain parts with you like i that, I there was one part i actually did i was sitting there i was crying i was like oh my gosh i could hear it in you it was also inspiring. Do you know what I mean? Like it's th these were what some of the things you did or some of the things you witnessed, but yeah. it's not you now. It's not you now. Do you know what I mean? And that to me was like, oh, thank you, Jesus. But anyway, go on, carry on. Go on. Yeah, and just like reading that. And even if it wasn't something I've done, the emotion behind it was just so real. So while I was doing the Audible book for two weeks, I. I recorded it like four hours, you know, three times a day. It was just, you know, and then repeating. And then all this sex, it's very dark, it's very dirty. So it's like talking about things that women don't normally discuss. So he made me do it again. <laughs> um, but and also to say that, you know, she is dyslexic. And so when she, she so uh, for the most part, even if it's something that she's comfortable reading, she'll catch herself she'll get caught up on a word that she knows and so but my brain works faster than my mouth so my brain is like moving i can actually feel it moving more than my mouth so i like jump ahead and you know for every audition if you're out there and you're an actor i have to memorize a lot of my auditions i can't read off the page it's really hard for me um to do that so i was dealing with dyslexia and reading out loud and all that stigma behind that when i, I mentioned when i said so I didn't mention the beginning as we were self-publishing the book. Like I didn't like put it on her plate then because I knew she would like have a heart attack. But once it was released, I was like, so maybe we should look at the audio book, you know, because people are, you know, I know people are asking for that. And she was like, no. <laughs> no. I was like, can we hire an actor or somebody? Yeah. He's like, you're an actor. You're it's the better actor. If the, the author reads it. And I'm like, wait, I never, I, 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 no, I don't want to. But anyways. I never want to play Roxanne. Everybody asked me that. I have no interest in playing Roxanne whatsoever. Um, I would like to play Alice. I don't know what you are comfortable playing, so that would have to be your decision. All and of the roles, any of the roles, yeah. all of the roles. Um, tattoo girl, actually. Actually, no, no. The, the glam girl. Glam girl. Yeah. <laughs> but you have to make her British. Oh, no, you can make her American. I've been trying to do my American accent for you. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah. Is that cool? 
Thank she you. Got great skill, you know? Wow, yeah. And directing, yeah. You know, we, we wrote the pilot for the TV show for it, and it's out right now, but we're just really trying to stay open. I mean, we I've been wanting to direct together for a long time and mm -hmm. trying to get us on a project together. Um, he's a little hesitant because he says I'm a little bossy. Um, um, but I'm going to try to make that happen. But a lot of the things we are producing, we kind of put like one of us is we'll direct or we'll direct uh, something together. So we'll see. I mean, we're just trying to really turn it over to God and just whatever's meant to be is supposed to be. And I just really think these stories need to be told and people are suffering, especially with social media, especially with the dating app, especially with, you know, texting, the, the miscommunication, like intimacy and communication are not going together anymore. And this younger generation is really suffering, really suffering. They, none of them are like, know how to commit and have healthy relationships and always looking for the shinier, shinier, bigger, better, which, you know, as addicts we do too. So you will we'll, we'll and this and this thing of like this thing of social anxiety, like on you know, on the on the laptop or on a phone, they can communicate well. Then in person, no. it's like they don't quite know what to do, yeah. what to you know, where to put that. It's like this we need to somehow find a way to, we can't eradicate it because obviously I know technology is just getting better and better and better. But yeah, telling stories like this putting it out there and showing as well that it's not just females, it's men as well. Yes, you can be a female that is empowered with what you do with your body, et cetera, et cetera. But if there is an issue, there's an underlying issue, it should be something that should be talked about and dealt with openly with no shame, no bloody taboo. You know exactly. what I mean? Exactly, yeah. No, I have no problem with someone showing their sexuality or putting no. it out there. But it's, you have to look at why you're doing it. And when I was doing, you know, flirting and intriguing and being overly sexual and making sexual jokes and being one of the guys, and that's just mm -hmm. my personality. And it's like, no, actually, there's something in you that needs that validation, that attention, that saying you're enough. And I was so depleted with self-love and self-worth and always looking outside myself that the moment it would go away, I would feel empty. So if you're out there and, and you're thinking, I'm saying you can't like watch, masturbate, look at porn, all that, but you have to look at why you're doing it. If it's filling something because you're depleted or incomplete is where the problem lies. And I think a lot of people, you know, go on Instagram and look for, to get high, to not live in reality, to live in fantasy. I think our society is really pushing towards that and it's damaging. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that everybody has their, the people can do, sorry, so people can do, you know, if two people can do the exact same behavior and one is like totally fine with it because it doesn't, it's not affecting them the yeah. same way as this other person that when they do that, they it's go like, home and feel like shit. The yeah. other person was like, I had no problem just having sex with that stranger. It was like a yeah. fun thing or whatever. Yeah. It didn't, you know, define me or my thing. And then another person was like, no, I feel like why didn't they text me back why didn't they go you know they ghosted me Whatever. why am i stalking them why, why am, I... am i driving past their apartment looking for them why am i so there's like whatever yeah. i always say you know for, with you know for people that i work with in the program you know it's like you know if it makes you uncomfortable then take a look at it if it's not yeah. something that makes you uncomfortable then it's not an issue necessarily for you but you know that's it's yeah. to everybody it's an individual thing yeah yeah. So, so oh I my God, we could talk for hours. It's I just know it's an hour. hour. Ending because I know, I know. Uh, the, the, uh, oh, what's your son's name? Davis. No, damn it. What's his yeah. name? Javis. Davis. Yeah, Davis. 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 So I know he's probably milling around like, hey, hello, parents, <laughs> where are you? So listen. So uh, last thing, <laughs> what would be like when you? <sighs> When you first realized you had an issue, what would have been the best advice for you to have received at that point or when you were first acting out? What would someone, what can someone say, or someone can hear this being said now that can trigger something in them to make them look at themselves and go, okay, I need help. Where do I go? What do I do? What, what would you say? What would be your advice? Well, I think he just put it perfectly. You know, if you do these things and then feel bad about yourself after or go in a downward spiral and you can't get out, and the only way to get out is either doing it again or doing something and amplifying it is a problem. But what I say, the two things I say to people if they think they have this issue or how to get out of it, first, recognize that there's a lot of drama in your relationships. There's a lot of drama with your family members, your friends, 
your partners. This is just not about love and sex. The thing about sex and love addiction, it's about every relationship in your life. Coworkers, if you are triggered, if there is drama, that usually is a good sign that you should look at your relationships. You don't probably have great boundaries. You don't have bottom lines. You don't have do things that protect yourself spiritually, mentally, physically. The second thing is if you keep getting in bad relationships over and over again or being with somebody and then feeling like they don't complete you, always looking for that soulmate, that person that, that's like going to fix you. That is a big like bah, 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 caution, caution, yeah. because there is no such thing as a soulmate. Mark does not complete me. He is my partner for this lifetime. But if he left me, it, I'm honest, if, you, if he left me, I would be okay. I'd be devastated and I'd be heartbroken and I go through loss like everybody else, but he doesn't complete me. That's incapable. Another flawed human cannot fix a flawed human. Whoa, 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 not flawed. <laughs> well, all humans are flawed. <laughs> We're all flawed. We're all yeah. just He's kidding. But so he can leave me. My son can leave me. I mean, I would be beyond but he doesn't complete me. My son doesn't complete me. So if you are looking for someone to complete you, that is a sure sign that maybe you need to do some internal work like I had to do because underneath all that wanting attention, validation, fantasy, romance, sex, you know, falling in love, I love falling in love, the butterflies, the high is an emptiness that can never be filled. And I'm the only one that can fill it. So really what the program teaches you is self love. Like mm -hmm. I have self love now. I still have hard days. I still have that negative voice that tells me sometimes that I'm a loser and that I need to like get my stuff together. And I'm like, why? No negative voice. That's not true. You know, and I have moments and he has, sometimes has to help me with them. But and I literally, I literally say to myself when I hear that voice, I literally like, shut the fuck up, Loretta. <laughs> I love that. I'll try that. I'll be like, shut the fuck up, Rianne. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> but the last thing, if any of the things I said resonated with you, or you get the book and read it, please go online and fill out the forty questions. It's mm. self-diagnosed sex and love addicts. Forty questions. Forty questions. S L A A. Type it in and take the quiz. They say if you get five or more yeses, you might have this problem. And reach out to me. Maybe, you know, I'll send you to the right place. Or And you are not alone, right? Yeah. Yep. Thank you, guys. This is, like, just fantabulous. I I'm so it. happy. I'm going to keep asking for, like, hey, do you want to chat next month? Um, <laughs> about the color blue? I don't know. I'll just keep making excuses. <laughs> Find <laughs> reasons to chat with you guys. Love I really, it. really appreciate it. I'm loving watching the films because every time the films, your films are shown, they're shown not in the East Coast. I'm like, yeah. Ah. Wow, I know. I appreciate. Thank you. 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 Enjoy the rest of your day, and I will keep following everything you're doing on social. Like, I'm not a stalker. I promise. <laughs> 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 Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you again for tuning in to Living Out Loud with Loretta. If you enjoyed this podcast, please share it with a friend or several friends. Post a screenshot of this episode on your Instagram stories and tag me at Loretta Nacocha. You can also watch this episode with a cold beverage on my YouTube channel. The link is posted below. Lastly, if you have the time, please leave a positive review on Apple Podcasts so that we can continue sharing stories, singing songs, and living our lives really out loud.